it turns out that there are a lot of bees in Prospect Park. I think we found about 90 species so far right in this vicinity. I'm always looking for rare species, trying to keep track of the common species, finding new floral associations. And every time you come out here, it's a surprise. You know, you find species you didn't expect to find. And the park is a good place to study ecological associations and things like that. When people are concerned about decline or loss of honeybee populations, it begs the question, well, what about all of these more than 3,000 native bees in the United States? What are they doing? How are they contributing to pollination? And the answer is that we know surprisingly little about that. The honeybee is not native to North America, so all of our wildflowers have native pollinators. Bumblebees are very effective at what is known as buzz pollination. This is something that honeybees don't do, and this makes bumblebees particularly important pollinators in greenhouses and also in the open fields for things like eggplants, tomatoes. This very species is actually the one that's been commercialized for use in the eastern United States. This is a long tongue bumblebee, and you'll see it's going in a flower with a long corolla tube. This bee has a long face and a long tongue that allows it to efficiently forage for nectar on this sort of a plant. A close relative of this bee has actually disappeared from New York City in historical times called Bombus pennsylvanicus. And some people have suggested that this bee, Bombus fervidus, the golden northern bumblebee, may be declining as well. Yet I still see them in pretty good numbers in Brooklyn and elsewhere in New York City. And I think it's because we still have a pretty good number of clover patches and also some of these plants with long corolla tubes that produce a lot of nectar and with these resources they're able to survive here. This is the yellow-faced bee, one of our smallest native bees. The male has an all yellow face that he probably uses to signal other males or females. There's the carpenter bee, female, large carpenter bee. As a contrast in size, this is a small carpenter bee. I don't think the native bees are going to replace the honeybees, I think that's not realistic. I do think that if we understand the native bees better, then we can certainly manage for them, and it could be as simple as maintaining better habitat for them, having alternative food plants that can boost their numbers. There may be low-cost, almost passive management techniques that could provide a lot more so-called free pollination or background pollination by the native species.